Hello Nidorinars and Nidorinos and welcome to the Holland region and more specifically Fortree City where the Fortree Flies are hosting the Sandaloon Swarm. The Swarm are going to start out massive with Center Scorch and Volcarona whereas the Fortree Flies are also starting out huge with Horlucha and Salamence, the two Pokemon they started out with last round actually so they clearly want to keep up the momentum as they are currently on a three game winning streak but let us know in the comments below who you think will win will the fortress flyers get their fourth win in a row or will the Santaloon swarm get their second win in a row well lucha starts out with an absorb onto center scorch does very minor damage being not very effective but that speed definitely goes to the fortress flyers today as we get a mud slap coming from salamance and targets volcarona also not doing a great deal of damage but it will lower volcarona's accuracy volcarona now Two bug fire type Pokemon on the side of the Sandaloon Swarm goes with an Ember, so it will get that stab boost being a fire type, but it's still not very effective on his Hellamance. Santa Scorch now is going to go with a Roar, and it targets Salamance, so it will send the pseudo legendary back to the bench. And being dragged out is Corviknight, the steel flying type from the Gala region. So don't be confused, Salamence is still in this battle, it's just been sent back to the bench. Now as always, this is a 6 on 6 metronome battle, and if we hit that 20 minute time limit, we will go into single battle overtime. Holucha now sets up with a Calm Mind, so it's just looking here to boost its stats. And that it will, it boosts that special attack and special defense. It is a more physical attacking type of Pokemon, but still any boost is a good boost. As we get a Cross Poison coming from Volcarona, but it doesn't affect the Steel type in of Corviknight, who's going to go with a Shadow Punch. Goes for Santa Scorch. Santa Scorch now is its opportunity to respond. And it's going to go with a Cut. That Cut's going to target Horlucha. Decent hit from that previously known Hidden Machine type move. Horlucha now. Quickest Pokemon on the field with that 118 base speed goes with a foul play. Targeting Volcarona here. Not a bad hit, almost getting Volcarona down into the yellow. Volcarona is still holding strong as it goes with the power split. That power split's going to target Corviknight as Volcarona continues to target the Galarian Bird. Brick break now coming from Corviknight. Now we'll get Volcarona finally down into the yellow. That not very effective move, but that flame body ability will leave Corviknight burned. So Corviknight's going to be taking damage in between turns, thanks to Volcarona. Agility now coming from Center Scorch, so it's going to highly boost its speed at stat there. Considering Center Scorch only has a speed of 65. Center Scorch now being the quickest on the field, thanks to that agility. Goes with the Minimize, so it's continuing to boost its stats, this time boosting its evasiveness, making it a harder target for the Fortree Flyers to hit these birds. are going to try and eat these bugs as quickly as possible, you have to think. Horlucha now sets up a hail, so everyone's going to be taking damage in between turns thanks to this. So this could actually be a hindrance to the Fortree Flyers, but time will tell. There's Volcarona now with its opportunity. Goes with a Torment, so this will stop... Corviknight from using Metronome over the coming turns. So Corviknight needs to take advantage of this one. Goes with the grassy terrain. So this will actually be more beneficial, you have to think, to the Sandaloon Swarm, who will be re restoring energy in between turns thanks to this grassy terrain. Now the Four True Flyers are actually sitting in fifth position. They've had a very up and down season. They started off strong with a winning streak. Then went on a bit of a losing streak, but now they're back on that three wins. So they're starting to show form in the middle of the season here. As everyone restores health from that grassy terrain. Whereas the Sandalone Swarm started off very strong in the season, got as high as fourth place, but they've now dropped down to 14th. So they started off strong, just like the Fortree Flies, but once they started to drop off, they just could not get any more momentum. They need to try and get some wins in the later half of this season, see if they can continue the momentum from last week today. That worry seed to Hulucha gives us that insomnia ability so Hulucha won't be going to sleep at all. Hulucha now goes with a frenzy plant. Grass type moves do have a boost at the moment thanks to the grassy terrain. But it's still going to do very minor damage to Center Scorch. Now Volcarona goes with a hold back. 
targeting Holucha there. Holucha has taken quite a number of moves, but it's still ha hanging in there as we get a struggle coming from Corviknight to Volcarona. Doesn't do much damage to Volcarona. You have to think Corviknight just did more damage to itself with that recoil damage. As everyone on the field is getting hit by that hail. However, even though they're taking damage from the hail, Volcarona and Center Scorch do get a health restoration from that grassy terrain as Corviknight takes that burn damage. So Corviknight's now down into the yellow. Center Scorch still with the speed ability. Again, thanks to that agility early on. Goes with a Zen head, but if it targets Holucha, it'll be super effective. And that it does, and Holucha has been eliminated. It is the first Pokemon taken down in this battle. It's taken over five minutes for us to get an elimination here. But Center Scorch gets it over Holucha there. Role play now, coming from Volcarona. So it's going to lose its Flame Body ability. And it will become the Mirror Armor, same as Corviknight's. Simple Beam now, coming from Corviknight, targets Center Scorch there. So Center Scorch's stats will be able to go up twice as much as normal, or be lowered twice as much as is regularly expected in a battle, as that hail continues to hit everyone on the field. Now, as always, in our description below, you will find a link to our Instagram page, where you can get regular ladder and fixture updates, as well as our match of the week. Corviknight taking that damage from the burn. Salamence comes back onto the field for the four tree flyers. So Salamence, you have to think, could have that speed advantage. It has 100 base speed. So actually, you think Center Scorch and it will still be going first thanks to that agility. It goes with a tackle attack, welcoming Salamence back onto the field. Massive speed advantage on the side of the Sandalene Swarm at the moment. Perish Song being set up by Volcarona, though, so everybody on the field will be eliminated in. Three turns. So what they need to do is they need to get back to the bench somehow. If they can use a move that'll put them back to the bench, they will not be eliminated. As Salamence uses a heal bell, this will cure Corviknight of that burn. But Corviknight still only has ability, the opportunity to use Struggle, and it takes itself and Volcarona down into the red. And there's that hail still hitting everyone on the field. You have to think Salamence and Corviknight wouldn't like it. They are weak to Ice-type attacks. As Corviknight just hangs in there. Thankfully, it did get cured of that burn. Otherwise, you have to think Corviknight would be eliminated right now. As everybody's Perish count will fall to three. That countdown will continue between every turn. You have to wonder if Volcarona and Corviknight will actually last those three turns. And we'll get a Glare now. Coming from Center Scorch. And so Corviknight isn't burned, but it's now paralyzed. So it may not be able to get off any moves in between turns as we get a sand attack coming from Salamance. It's going to lower the accuracy there of Volcarona. But Volcarona's mirror armor actually shoots it straight back there to Salamance. Volcarona is going to go with a cross poison now. You have to think it's going to go for Salamance. It wouldn't affect Corviknight. Big hit on the dragon type Pokemon. Taking it down into the yellow, and Corviknight shakes off its paralysis and goes for an agility, so it's going to boost its speed just like Santa Scorch did earlier. Now, also in our description below is a link to our Google Doc where you can see the ladder, the fixture, stats, and all the team rosters. It does get regularly updated every Tuesday. As everybody's perish count now falls to two, and the grassy terrain finally leaves the battlefield. So the bug type Sandalene Swarm won't be getting any HP back. As both Santa Scorch and Volcarona have almost lasted 10 minutes in this battle. And we know they're on a ticking clock with that perish song as we get a clear smog from Santa Scorch to Salamance. Volcarona now goes with that sacred sword. And they continue to target Salamence, who's now down in the red with that not very effective move. Salamence has the opportunity to respond here. And as we reach the 10 minute mark in this battle, we've only had one Pokemon eliminated so far. So you have to wonder, will we be going into overtime with the way things are going in this matchup? Corviknight, no moves left. It's going to go with that struggle 
again onto Volcarona who still holds on and Corvidite is eliminated thanks to that recoil damage as everyone's perish count now falls to one obviously except for Corvidite whose perish song came early Noivern, another dragon flying type comes out for the four true flyers amazing speed does Noivern have with 123 base speed but Santa Scorch is still faster and it goes with a hammer arm and that will finish off the pseudo legendary Salamence has been eliminated from this match and yet there's still yet to be an elimination on the side of the Sentinel Swarm even after 10 minutes in this battle Core Enforcer though will come from Nova and this will hit both Santa Scorch and Volcarona Volcarona is finally taken down and that is an elimination from the Sandaloon Swarm. As Santa Scorch's Perish count will also fall to zero. So Noivern gets that elimination count on its side. We have Herrick Cross now coming out for the Sandaloon Swarm as we had Unpheasant come out for the Four Tree Flyers. And Golisopod also comes out to join Heracross. Now again, you have to think that speed advantage will definitely be on the side of the Four Tree Flyers. They are the fastest team in the Elite Challenge League. Noivern is going to start an uproar, so no one's going to sleep. Targeting Heracross, and a very decent hit there on the fighting bug type. Unpheasant. He's going to go with a Crush Claw. And they continue to target Heracross, and Heracross is almost eliminated, but it's just holding on there. Heracross is going to respond with a Skull Bash. So it's going to tuck its head on this turn, boost its defense. And hopefully not get eliminated before it gets to hit connect with that Skull Bash in the next turn. Got Isopod now. Gonna go with a Bolt Beak. This will be super effective on the Flying types. And it targets Unpheasant and a massive hit there. Almost taking Unpheasant all the way down into the red. It's hanging into the yellow there. Noivern now. Continues that uproar and it'll finish Heracross off. So Heracross does not get to connect with that Skull Bash. As the Fortree Flies have just leveled the playing field now. Acid Spray coming from Unpheasant. It's going to target Glycopod. Doesn't do a great deal of damage, however, but it will lower Glycopod's special defense. Glycopod sets up another grassy terrain. We've already seen this on the field today. And again, it's just going to benefit the Sandaloon Swarm as they are on the field, whereas the Fortree Flies are all flying. So there's Glycopod restoring health, restoring some of the HP it just lost thanks to one pheasant. As we have the fifth Pokemon coming out for the Sandaloon Swarm. And it's going to be Orbeetle, the Psychic Bug type. Orbeetle is the fourth ranked Pokemon on the Sandaloon Swarm and it's definitely more defensive having that 110 defense, 120 special defense, but it takes damage from the uproar being created by Noivo. Unpheasant now goes with the Swallow, but it does fail. No Beetle goes for the double edge. It's going to get recoil damage from this, but targets on Pheasant and it finishes off the normal flying type. So on Pheasant has been eliminated as the Sandaloon Swarm take back the lead. Or Beetle gets that recoil damage. And Golisopod is going to go for a Meteor Beam. It's going to set it up on this turn. You will see that connect on the next turn. As it gets a special attack boost there before it's even going to go for the Meteor Beam. We will be seeing the last Pokemon come onto the field shortly for the Four True Flies. As Glycopod is back to 100%. And it's Archeops coming out now for the Flyers. Again, that speed advantage still on the side of Four Tree. That's Noivern. The third ranked Pokemon on the Flyers. Archeops being the second ranked. Noivern sets up with an Icy Wind and it's going to hit both Orbeetle and Glycopod. And Golisopod's speed will be lowered, as does Orbeetle's, but they were already going <laughs> last anyway. So Archeops, now with this opportunity, goes with a slam, and it's got that massive attack stat. So you know it's going to do some good damage, and takes Orbeetle down into the red. Orbeetle has that chance to respond now. And it goes for the Vacuum Wave. So Archeops takes minor damage, but that Meteor Beam... Comes from Glycopod and Noivern avoids it. So even with the setup, Glycopod is unable to connect with that Meteor Beam. This could be huge for the Fortree Flies. Gives them an opportunity 
to go through a turn with only taking damage from one Pokemon. Nova now. It's gonna go for a bite. See if it can cause the Orbeetle to flinch. Doesn't even worry about it though because it's super effective and Orbeetle has been eliminated by Noivern. So Archaeops will focus its attention solely on the Glycopod here, but instead it just sets up with an Iron Defense. So it doesn't go for the offensive type move. But things are all leveled back up on the playing field now. Glycopod. The Water Bug type goes with the Frost Breath. This will be super effective on the flying types. It goes for Noivern. Will be twice as susceptible and has been eliminated. Noivern has been hit with a super effective critical hit, and I think it was a one hit wonder. So Noivern is eliminated from this matchup as Golisopod restores its health from the grassy terrain. So there's only one Pokemon now remaining for the Fortree Flyers in Archaeops as the last Pokemon comes out for the Sandalian Swarm, and it's Shuckle, who is the most defensive Pokemon in the Elite Challenge League with its 230 defense and special defense. It cannot hit other Pokemon at all. It is terrible at it, but it can take some hits. This Archaeops sets up a Yawn. Targeting Shuckle, so Shuckle should fall asleep at the end of the next turn. Glycopod goes with that extreme speed. Chipping away there at Archaeops. It's not very effective, though. Shuckle's going to try and get off a move, get some minor damage in, going in for a Metal Claw, but Archaeops avoids that attack as Glycopod again gets back to 100% health thanks to the grassy terrain, which has now finally left the field. It is that 2-1 advantage. The Sentinel Swarm have the advantage. They need this win. They are 14th. They want this victory over the Fortree Flyers. They desperately want to try and get themselves up the ladder as a terrain pulse comes from Archaeops. There's no terrain on the field now, but it still gets a very good hit there on the Glycopod. And there's our three minute warning. So we have three minutes left in this battle before we go into overtime. As we get a draining kiss from Glycopod, who has spent a lot of this battle getting its health restored. Shuckle. Getting a move off before it falls asleep. Goes with the glare. So this will leave Archaeops paralyzed, which should give the speed advantage to Glycopod. This is massive. A very good play there by the sleeping Shuckle. Well, the now sleeping Shuckle was drowsy. See if Glycopod will be going first. No, Archaeops still has the speed advantage, even though it's paralyzed. And it goes with a Focus Blast. And it's going to target the Sleeping Shuckle. And again, Shuckle takes massive... It uh, doesn't take massive damage, sorry. Due to its amazing defense, as we get Disarming Voice coming from Glycopod now. And a very good hit... Onto Archaeops, who continues to be chipped away at by the Sandaloon Swarm. Now, Shuckle having only 5 speed, you do not expect it to move faster than Archaeops. Whereas, Glycopod has a speed of 40, so the Sandaloon Swarm have terrible speed. Whereas, Archaeops has 110 base speed as it goes for a flail. So, it's shaken off that paralysis twice in a row. As we get a headbutt now, coming from Glycopod. And again, Archaeops is still holding on after that not very effective move. Shuckle's still asleep, which is fantastic for the Fortree Flyers. Archaeops needs to focus his attention onto Glycopod here. Again, it shakes off that paralysis. It's going to go with a Zap Cannon, but Glycopod avoids the attack. This is Glycopod's opportunity here. Goes with a Future Sight. So, Archaeops will not take any damage this turn. But if it does not finish this battle soon enough... It will be taking damage from the future site as Shuckle is still asleep on the field. Shuckle does look very peaceful down there. As we have our 60 second warning, that countdown clock is on the field. We get a bulldoze now coming from Archaeops. Hits both Golisopod and Shuckle, but does very, very minor damage to both of them. It does lower their speed, however. Golisopod needs to finish it here. We could potentially be going into overtime, which would be massive if Archaeops can have that advantage, we're going to get a low sweep. And that'll do it. As that clock was ticking down with about 33 seconds left, the Santaloon Swarm have won. They've gotten a huge victory over the 5th place Fortree Flyers. You have to think the Fortree Flyers will not be sitting 5th after this round. But Swarm, with a huge win, they want that. That's two in a row. If they can get three next week when they host the Battle of the Angels, that'll be massive again as they try and edge closer to the eight as we get closer and closer to the first ever finals in the Elite Challenge League. The Fortree Flies 
must be very disappointed with that loss. They had three wins in a row, huge momentum, but losing to the St. Helens form will be terrible for them. Next week, they're going to want to turn things around when they go to Viridian City and take on the Viridian Division. But this was a very slow starting battle. It took over 10 minutes for the San Luis Swim to lose a Pokemon. And by that stage, they had eliminated three from the four true flyers. The flyers did everything they could to get back into it. They even leveled things up, which was very impressive by them, showing great resilience. But the San Luis Swim and Goliathopod were able to just chip away, especially that amazing hit onto Noivern. Noivern, who performed very well for the four true flyers, just after getting hit, here's that Frost Breath. And it was a one-hit wonder. So that was an amazing hit there by Golisopod. And it was at that point almost where it seemed like all of the Fortress Fly's chances were taken away. And Golisopod gets that final elimination. Sam Loon Swarm get the win. Amazing. And Nidorinos, Nidorinos, thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments below who you thought was the best on field. And always remember, you are awesome. And I will speak to you next time.